Alright, so if you clicked on this video, you probably have or are working towards a degree in physics, but maybe you've realized that the job prospects aren't the best, or maybe you've just wondered whether you can become an engineer with a physics degree. For those of you who are new here, my name's Lewis. I've got a degree in astrophysics, a master's in space engineering, and I now work as a spacecraft engineer. So I've walked the path from physics degree to engineering career. And so today we'll take a look at why we might be interested in making that switch, what are some of the difficulties and challenges involved, and some techniques techniques and methods that we can use to maximize the probability that we have a successful transition from a physics degree to an engineering career. So let's look at why I switched from physics to engineering. Now, I made a video recently on the subtle differences between a physics and engineering degree, and ultimately between physics and engineering as a whole. Now, if you haven't seen that already, a quick summary of it is that physics asks why, whereas engineering asks how. Now, what I mean by that is that a physicist asks questions to try and uncover the natural laws of the universe, to try and uncover what really drives physical processes in the universe. Whereas an engineer will use the principles that physics has uncovered to try and develop solutions to real world problems. Now deciding the direction that we want our career to follow can be quite difficult, but we can make the process easier by evaluating our options against what I call the five Fs of career decisions. Now this is an idea that I took from Ali Abdal's three Fs of entrepreneurship and I modified it to be specifically relevant to deciding what career that you want to pursue. So what are the five Fs? Well we've got fun, fulfillment, freedom, finances, and flexibility. And what these are are essentially all of the different parameters that we can evaluate which career is best for us against. So now that we've introduced the five Fs, let's look at them individually and compare how a physics career weighs up against an engineering career on each of the different elements. Let's start with the first F, which was fun. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this F because fun is completely subjective. What you find fun, another person may not, and vice versa. And so when it comes to deciding which of the careers you find more fun, only you can make that choice. So we can take a look at the second F now, which is fulfillment. And like fun, fulfillment is highly subjective, but because of the differences in the approaches that physics and engineering takes, we can actually look at what a physicist might find fulfilling compared to an engineer. So let's look at that now. So we've got physics and we've got engineering. Now, Physics is all about asking why, as I've already mentioned, essentially about uncovering the laws of the universe and the fundamental principles that govern how the world and the universe works. So a physicist might find knowledge fulfilling, whereas engineers might find developing solutions to problems that help people more fulfilling. Now that's not to say that physicists don't help people. It's all about helping people fundamentally, but it's about how you go about doing that. Okay, so moving on to the third F, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, where we start to see real differences between physics and engineering, and that is freedom. Freedom can be split into two different types of freedom, I guess. We've got time, and we've got location. Now, physics and engineering differ significantly in how much time and location freedom that you have. So if we were to first look at the flexibility that a physics and engineering career gives us over our time, we see that actually an engineering career doesn't give us much at all. And that's because most of the engineering jobs are regular nine to five careers. That means you've got core working hours, you work a certain amount of hours every week, and you don't really have too much control over how you move those hours around. There are some careers and some jobs and some companies that may offer that flexibility and some will differ more than others, but generally speaking, you're in a regular salary job and you work a set amount of hours every week and that is directed to you by upper management. Now, if we were to look at a physics career by contrast, we'd see that you actually get far more flexibility over your time. And that's because most careers in physics are in something like academia or research, which typically involves self-directed projects. For the most part, so long as you meet deadlines for grants and papers and teaching, you'll typically have a lot of flexibility over your daily schedule. So when it comes to freedom over our time, we see that physics actually has far more. But the same can't be said for location, and that's because with a physics career, you're typically confined to a specific institution and it's far harder to move around institutions. Now, by contrast, engineering offers you far more flexibility over your location because engineers are needed all over the world. And so that gives you far more options over whether you want to relocate or change industries or even move countries. And on top of this, depending on your specific engineering job, you may have the option to work remotely. But generally speaking, in, when it comes to location, Engineering 
is what gives us the most flexibility. All right, so now let's look at the fourth F, the one that I think most people are gonna have most interest in, which is the finances. And unfortunately for physics, this is where it starts to get a little bit rough. So let's look at physics against engineering. Now the reason it gets rough for physics comes down to multiple different factors. The first is the entry requirements for a career in each of these fields. The entry requirement for a role in physics typically requires at least a PhD, if not a postdoc. And that's because those research roles really place high emphasis on your research skills. So having a PhD really proves that. Compare this to an engineering degree where most, I would say, would require a master's but you could even get in with a bachelor's in, in many cases. You don't even have to go for an advanced degree. And this lower academic requirement massively opens up access to engineering roles compared to physics roles. Now, the second thing that really damages physics in the finances is that there's really low demand. Now, as much as I would like to see more physics research being done, most of the the demand for physics comes from academic institutions and governments. We don't really see private industry getting involved with physics research too much. Compare this to engineering and there's a huge, huge, huge demand for engineers. And the reason for that comes down to the fact that we always need engineers. We're always going to need people to fix things, to invent new solutions to problems that people face, and to push the boundaries of what humans can do technologically. Now, the final thing that really hurts with uh, the financial aspect is the career progression. It's, it's unclear for uh, a lot of physics grads what the career path and the trajectory of their career is going to be. If we compare this to engineering, we can have pretty clear career progressions because we know we're going to start off with an entry engineering position and then progress to a senior engineer and to a team lead and then to a, a manager of an entire engineering department and despite not needing a PhD or even a master's in some cases we can see that the entry level salary for an engineer in the UK is actually higher than physics for example in 2020 to 2021 graduates in engineering roles across all skill levels in the UK earned an average of 31,000 pounds per year in the same time period graduates in physical sciences roles earned an average of 20 28,800 pound a year, or around seven and a half percent less. So when it comes to comparing the financial aspect between engineering and physics, then there's no question that engineering is the better option. But we can now look at the final F, which is flexibility. What I mean by flexibility is having the ability to navigate different career paths and different career trajectories as you progress through your career. Now we can also think of it as another way, which is the flexibility over the type of work you do. Now in that regard, we see that engineering has high flexibility, whereas physics, well, it doesn't have no flexibility. You can still obviously move around the careers, but it doesn't have as much career flexibility as engineering. That's simply because of the nature of physics where there's not that many different roles within physics. It's pretty much either teaching or researching in academia. This is compared to engineering, which gives you much more flexibility over the industry you work in and even the, uh, the type of field of engineering that you work in. But there is a caveat to this. This is specifically referring to careers. When it comes to degrees, they completely flip. An engineering degree is far less flexible than a physics degree. And the reason for that is because an engineering degree is far more specialized than what a physics degree might be. And the skills in an engineering degree typically are very, very specific to the specific type of engineering that you're studying. Compare this to a physics degree where you're learning skills that are much more applicable to different industries outside of physics and at a much deeper level than you would in engineering. And this is why we see physics graduates going into careers in finance and tech and business. It's because all of those skills that you learn in a physics degree are very, very flexible and they can be applied to different industries. Now that we've looked at those five F's that help you build up your career choice, how easy is it actually to go from a physics degree to an engineering career? Well, it's probably not as hard as you think, and that's because engineering, for the most part, is built upon physics. Or another way of thinking of it is that engineering is just physics applied to solve real-world problems. Now, as a physics grad, you're very fortunate in that you've got very strong analytical skills, which in some cases is actually better than you'd get in an engineering degree, and that's because you spend a lot more of your time in a physics degree focused on very complex maths, whereas in an engineering degree, at some stage, Stage, you switch from that complex maths and you go into the practical applications and you start spending time working with 
CAD software or with circuitry software that is specialized to that form of engineering. But of course, if you're a mechanical engineering grad versus a physics grad, you're gonna have a better chance as a mechanical engineering grad. And that's because throughout your engineering degree, you're gonna get exposed to specialist knowledge and specialist tools that are directly applicable to that specific role. And unless you do external work as a physics student, you're gonna be left behind with those skills. An example of this would be like mechanical engineering where you're exposed to CAD software and computational fluid dynamics throughout your entire degree, which are skills that are super important in a mechanical engineering role. And you don't typically get as much of that if that at all in a physics degree. And another example of this could be electronic engineering where in a electronic engineering degree, you get exposure to really complex circuitry. Whereas in a physics degree, you probably get a little bit of circuitry exposure, but definitely nothing at the level where you'd get into a graduate role as an electronic engineer. Now there are ways that you can bridge that gap through developing your skills and knowledge further. And one of those ways is through today's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant makes learning interactive and engaging with thousands of hands-on lessons in maths, science, programming, and AI. Instead of passively watching lectures or reading textbooks, you'll learn by doing using problem solving techniques that are six times more effective than traditional video-based learning. And Brilliant's first principles approach helps you build a deep understanding from the ground up. Brilliant is an amazing way to work on your math skills, your problem solving skills, and your knowledge of engineering concepts through fun and interactive lessons that make learning feel like a game rather than a chore. Now one of my favorite features of Brilliant is their app, which allows me to practice on the go. Now I've been using this for topping up on my advanced maths knowledge, but if you're interested in engineering, they have great courses on circuitry, on technology, on data, and even on quantum computing. So whether coming from a physics background and you want to top up on your software engineering skills or your maths or your circuitry skills, or maybe you're an engineer who's looking to top up on their math skills, Brilliant has you covered. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days, plus get 20% off your annual premium subscription, head to brilliant.org slash Lewis Cooper or click the link in the description. Now on top of tools like Brilliant, there are other ways that you can make the switch from a physics degree to an engineering career more effectively. And I call these the five levers of success. Now essentially, the more of these levers we pull, the higher our chance of success when it comes to switching from a physics degree to an engineering career. So what are the five levers? They are the time lever, the skill lever, the education lever, the opportunity lever, and the aptly named leverage lever. So what are these different levers? Well, let's look at them individually. We've got time, which is to decide early. Essentially, the earlier that you can decide that you wanna make the switch from a physics degree to an engineering career, the better your odds are of actually making that switch effectively. We can think of this like if you was traveling down a river and there was a fork in the river, if you decide you want to go down the right direction and you start paddling to the right direction earlier, it's going to be much easier than if you start paddling when you're right next to that fork and you have to paddle hard against the flow of the river to get into the right direction. And it's the same thing with careers, right? If we decide early, we can start putting things in place that lets us head towards that direction naturally. The second level is skills and this is all about leveling the playing field. So what this means is that we want to practice and start developing skills which are relevant for the engineering career we want to get into. So if you're a physics grad and you want to get into some form of mechanical engineering, well you best be proficient with CAD modeling for example. It's all about leveling up skills which are relevant for the specific career that you're going for. The next is the education level which as you can probably guess is getting certifications or degrees. So this is one of the levers that I pulled. So I went out after my astrophysics degree and I went and got a master's in space engineering. And what that does obviously is it pushes me and opens up many more doors in the space engineering world. And once you get a foot in the door, then it's so much easier to move around into different industries, into different fields, and even into different types of engineering. And given that a lot of roles in engineering actually ask for a master's degree, going from physics undergrad to engineering masters to engineering career is gonna be a lot easier than physics undergrad, physics masters, and then engineering career. The fourth lever is the opportunity lever, and this is to go out and get internships or grad schemes in whatever type of engineering you're interested in. 
And as you can imagine, getting an intern or a grad scheme really helps kickstart your career in engineering. It gives you sort of low stakes learning opportunities on the job to dive in to that engineering work environment and give yourself some sort of experience in engineering, even if your academic experience is in physics. So this is another thing I've done. I went straight into a grad scheme after my master's degree. And that really helped open up doors because it gave me exposure to currently three different types of engineering, which really opens up doors for future careers in those three different engineering disciplines. Now the final lever to pull is the leverage lever, and that is to use unfair advantages. Now the one big unfair advantage that we've got as physics grads is, as I've just mentioned in the previous section, our skills in analytics and mathematics. Physics gives us a really good strong foundation of problem solving and analytical skills which we can build engineering skills on top of. Now one of the examples that I can think of for this is with uh, developing software. I've had no formal experience in software other than maybe a few courses at university. But when I came into my software engineering role in my grad scheme, I could really dive into algorithms and developing tests for software that I perhaps would not have without having some form of uh, problem solving skills which I developed during university, which were very strong, which allowed me to solve the problems and figure out a, an approach that I could then go and figure out how to put that into software. So it's easier to know the approach and then figure out how to put it into software than it is to know the software but not know how to implement whatever approach is needed. So the key thing I really want you to take away from this video are these five levers. I've utilized every single one of these levers in my own journey from a physics grad to an engineer in industry. Now if you haven't gone to university yet and you're still undecided between a physics or an engineering degree then you might be interested in watching my video where I compare the two degrees which is right there. Other than that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one.